Greetings, fellow detectives, and welcome to Boiler Room Detective. The Case of the Shocked Boiler A contractor I worked with before asked me to look at a boiler replacement project in a college. Inside the boiler room, we saw three used cast iron sections laying on the floor. When the maintenance director saw me looking at the sections, he said, the sections cracked one a year for the last three years. Rather than replace the sections, the owner removed the defective sections and moved the end sections closer, essentially making the boiler smaller. They did not replace the burner or lower the firing rate, so the burner was oversized for the job. Next to the cast iron boiler was an even older copper fin boiler that was leaking. The owner told us he replaced the copper boiler's heat exchanger a few years ago, and it was already leaking. Following the piping, I saw four three-way valves, and the linkages were disconnected from the actuator. Each three-way valve was connected to a pump that fed a different loop. The mixing valves were used to temper the water in each zone. The valve would either allow hot water from the boiler, cooler return water, or a combination of each to the zone as directed by the thermostat, but they were disconnected. When asked about the valves, he said, we are going to fix those. The boiler room floor showed leaks from the hydronic loop all over the place. My spidey sense was screaming in my ear that this was a problem job and run away, but my ego said, we got this. We sold two vertical fire tube boilers to replace the old cast iron boiler. During the second heating season, I received a call from the contractor saying one of the boilers was leaking. When I arrived on site, the boiler was disconnected and the leak appeared to be where the tube was connected to the tube sheet. This usually means the boiler suffered thermal shock. I told the owner and the contractor what I believed and they looked at me credulously. Thermal shock occurs when the returning water to the boiler is much cooler than the boiler water, and this causes rapid expansion and contraction of the tubes. Most boilers can tolerate no more than a 20 to 30 degree temperature difference between the supply and the return water. After replacing the tube, the boiler was placed in service. The following winter, the other boiler started leaking, and I was again summoned to the building. The boiler this time was beyond repair. It was a contentious meeting as the customer and contractor thought we sold him garbage boilers, which they weren't. Since the boilers were now three years old, the manufacturer said they were out of warranty. My relationship with the customer and the contractor was now fractured beyond repair. It was frustrating as I knew it had nothing to do with the boilers. A few years later, I saw the contractor at an ASHRAE meeting and we chatted about the customer. I owe you an apology, he said. The new boiler he sold to replace mine lasted only two years. He was able to figure out the cause. The owner had no controls on the system, and the boiler operated at a constant 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Since the three-way valves were not working, they controlled the zone temperature manually by starting or stopping the zone pump. When the maintenance department got a call for heat, the maintenance tech would go to the building and start the pump. Once the building was warm, the maintenance tech would shut off the pump. The problem with this strategy was when the zone pump was off, the water temperature in the loop would drop to room temperature. When the pump started, it would push all that cool water back to the boiler and shock it with water that was over 100 degrees cooler than the boiler water. I learned with this job to always trust your inner voice. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have my two websites. The Brewing with Steam site has monthly blog posts on steam systems for breweries and distilleries. I have written 11 books on boilers and they are available on Amazon.
In addition, you could find some of my writings in these fine publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective, and I hope to see you on the next 